Hi 6P, this is Thursday's English lesson. So we're going to start off with our word of the day, which is pronounced cajole. Cajole, cajole. So if you cajole someone into doing something, you get them to do it after persuading them for some time. So Mrs. Cajole, Mrs. Cook cajoled the children in reading during break. So it's basically like you persuade, you persuade, persuade. And then they eventually do it. So I've cajoled many of you many a times to make you do your work this year. So have a go at the word of the day sentences. And then this is your picture for your Eric starter. I really like this picture. It's lovely. So have a look at the questions. So what does elderly mean? What are they relying on to walk? What does the shadow represent and what time area do you think the shadow represents? So do you think it represents now or do you think it maybe represents um, in the future, in the past? I'm going to ask why, as always. Okay, your main task for today is I want you to write the next paragraph or paragraphs of what happens next in the Alma film. Okay, so I've put some suggestions here. So what happens to the new doll? Um, do you know the new one that pops up right at the end of the video? What happens to the doll of Al Alma? Does she manage to escape? Does the shopkeeper appear? Now you've made your shopkeeper so they could appear. Or can Alma stop the next child becoming their doll? Now they're just some ideas. You might have some different ones, but that is what I want you to do today to create the next part of the story, okay? Now, think about how to keep the tension and suspense going. And this is what we looked at last week when we were looking at the dream giver, but I've just made it a bit shorter. So empty words or someone, shadow, something, the monster, the shopkeeper, because we don't actually know what they physically are and who they look like if you've not introduced them yet. Range of openers suddenly in an instant without warning, the blink of an eye, um, those types, those to just move the action on quite quickly. Rhetorical questions, they're really, really good to make the reader think. Remember, they answer those questions in their head. One word sentences or short sentences, so they're very short, um, stop, start, stop, start, add, very dramatic. And then using ominous sounds or feelings. So remember ominous, what it means that something bad might happen. Okay. So um, you could try and get those in. Now what I've done is I've done an example for you. And I will leave it on this Word document. So you can refer back to it. And magpie ideas if you wish. When you come to do your own. Um, and I've colour coded it to match the steps of success. So you can see where I've used those elements. Now. To get your get you thinking, I've done. I've typed up the end of the video in a story theme, and then I've added on my ending. So you know, so you've got a little bit to start off with. Okay, so this bit you will have for yours. So as her finger made contact with the face of the toy, her eyes instantly moved, and life poured into the doll Alma's life. A heartbeat later and the little girl peered out from the glass eyes of the doll. They were no longer lifeless. She breathed short, sharp breaths, but the only ears to hear them were those of the others around her. She could not move. She could... That's meant to say. She could not speak. She could not even scream. She was trapped. The young, innocent girl with not a care in the world was no longer a girl. She was a doll. Now, that's how... That's the last part of the film, okay, which I have typed up into a story style to get you going, okay? Now, this is the bit that you're going to be doing, that your part, what happens next, okay? And this is completely up to you. Now, I've just, no, I've just gone with um, that we might get a glimpse of the shopkeeper, okay? I'll read it to you, then we'll unpick it. So Alma took a few long deep breaths to steady her thoughts. Was she going to be stuck in here forever? Could she escape with the other dolls? Who was the next innocent victim going to be? Looking ahead into the dimly lit room, she caught a fleeting glimpse of a silhouette just ahead, standing very still in the shadows, lurking, watching, 
waiting. Was this the shopkeeper, Alma thought to herself? In the blink of an eye, this figure had vanished as quickly as it had appeared. She she searched the room. Good, always, she always read back your work. She searched the room for any sign of help, any sound. There was nothing except the sound of thousands of dolls' eyes flicking side to side. That apostrophe is in the wrong place. The eyes belong to the dolls. Suddenly, a familiar sound came to her ears. It was the sound of laughter, a young girl's laughter. Alma knew instantly that she had to deter the girl from writing her name on the wall, from entering the shop, from seeing her doll, and most importantly, from touching her doll. However, there in the corner again, the shadow shifted once more. Her nerves buzzed like an electric pulse beneath her porcelain skin. How would she save this innocent girl? Now that's all I've done. I've not gone into much detail. I'm just building up that suspense. But I, Alma is trying to save the next innocent victim. But also we're getting a glimpse of the shopkeeper as well. Okay. Now if we look at our steps to success. So red is empty word. So here I've used silhouette. Which is like the black outline. And I've used shadow. Range of open is in blue, so suddenly, however, looking ahead into the dimly lit room in the blink of an eye. And then I've got rhetorical questions. I've put quite a lot of rhetorical questions in there because it really does build up that suspense and tension. So, and I've put one right at the end. How would she save this innocent girl? Using vocabulary like in innocent as well. Could she escape with the other dolls? One word sentences or short sentences I've put here. So she caught a fleeting glimpse of a silhouette just ahead, standing very still in the shadows, lurking, watching, waiting. Just builds up that suspense really, really well. It's very dramatic. And then ominous sounds and feelings. So I've said here, like a young girl's laughter, which we know might end to be something quite bad. And then her nerves buzzed like an electric pulse beneath her porcelain skin. Now, if you don't know what porcelain is, it's usually what dolls are made out of. <laughs> now... I will leave this on here for you so you can magpie ideas but you might not want to go down that route you might want to do the Alma escapes she manages to escape somehow you might want to do that your shopkeeper appears and he does a little creepy monologue and talks to his dolls or her dolls it is your idea so it is completely up to you okay so if you scroll down the page this will still be here and then what I've done is I've added a table and then I've put in again the end part of the story. So you are writing from after the highlight bit what happens next. Okay. Think about your vocabulary as well. I've used a colon there for a list. I've used a semicolon near here because the two sentences are related. So think about your high level vocabulary and punctuation. I've used a colon here to explain. So you can take those um, and magpie them and alter them and tweak them for your own. Okay. But basically I'm looking for a what happens next paragraph or paragraphs. Okay. And if you're doing just one paragraph, it needs to be a few sentences. It can't just be like two or three sentences. And I'm looking for a little bit more substance, please. So you're writing the next paragraph or paragraphs about what happens next in the story of Alma. Okay. So after the video ends and use this bit that I've done, typing up the end of the story to help you. Okay. Remember it's suspense. Um, it's a bit creepy, it's a bit dark and um, building up that tension. Use the steps to success to help structure your work, okay? Can't wait to read them.